Hi, it's Jan from Melbourne Food Forest. Today we're going to be talking about one of the cutest vegetables that I grow. And you won't find these in the shops. It's cucamelons. Cucamelons are one of my favorite cucumbers to grow. They're also known as Mexican sour gherkins or mouse melons. They're teensy and adorable. A lot of people think I'm growing mini watermelons because the skin does look a lot like watermelon, but they're so tiny. They definitely win on the cute factor, but they're also a really practical vegetable to grow. For me, I have long struggled to grow cucumbers, standing cucumbers in our garden, and this is the first year I figured out why. I can't believe it took me so long. It's because we have a shady garden. For so long I thought cucumbers with their soft big leaves are going to get burnt in the sun, but no, I've realized that they need full blistering sun, which is why we've struggled to grow them for so long. We just don't have many full sun spots. Enter the cucamelon. What I love about them, there's so many things. The first is that they can grow in part shade. As you can see here, we have our cucamelons growing on a water tank. On our water tank. I mean, what a great use of space. How many people leave their water tank bare? I mean, you see bare water tanks everywhere. Instead, they could be covered in a forest of cucamelons like we have here. Because they're so small, they don't weigh it down either. You can put on some fine netting and they will happily scramble over this surface and give you food on an otherwise wasted surface. And that's also why we have white water tanks, to try and reflect as much light as we can get. We have such a shady garden, we've got to try and maximise any little skerrick of light and reflecting from a white surface is one of the ways. So this side faces north and these cucumelons actually really don't get any direct sun because in this area the sun's blocked out by the water tank, by the that huge tree up there which is in our neighbour's yard and it's evergreen that blocks out our light year round. And this is a very shady spot and look at how productive they are. I mean, there's not a huge number of vegetables, particularly cucumbers, that can fruit in shade. And these are one of them. So that's one of the reasons I love them. Second reason is because they're drought tolerant. Another reason why I haven't been able to grow good cucumbers is they need so much water. They're basically you know, 99% water, they're filled with water. Whereas cucumelons, on the other hand, are really drought tol tolerant. They originate from Mexico and they're tough as. I'm able to grow them even with my poor watering habits. Now, thirdly, often cucumbers in our garden, and you might have experienced the same, suffer from powdery mildew particularly ones growing in shadier, damper conditions. Ours tend to succumb to powdery mildew all too quickly. Cucamelons are virtually resistant to powdery mildew. I've never seen them get it other than at the very end of the season when they're about to die back. I mean, look at these leaves growing in full shade. It's doing pretty well. And the yellowing is actually due to underfeeding and that, that's, a, that's another issue, but it's not due to powdery mildew or um, yeah, or underwatering. Another thing I love about them is that they're also more cold tolerant. So they have almost all the best characteristics that standard cucumbers don't have. These for us will start producing generally mid to late summer into autumn and even into winter when they finish up. They start producing exactly at the point when our last cucumbers have given up on life. And it means that we get to extend our season. So we're currently mid-autumn and these are in full production still. And I'm going to give it a feed to stimulate the growth of more flowers and more fruit. And I actually see some up here. 
You can see the tiny, teensy little yellow flowers. They're so small. And it's grown up onto the top of our water tank. So when I harvest, I'm gonna have to climb up there and grab some of the fruit from off there. But I'm gonna give it a feed and encourage it to produce more fruit. For us, they do take a while to get going in our climate. So some people will grow them and go, oh, I haven't gotten any fruit and it's already the end of summer. Don't give up, they're actually start producing once the weather cools down which is perfect timing for smoothing your consumption of cucumbers if you're a cucumber lover you can see here that we have ours growing in a large pot and this pot's about 50 centimeters deep and about 25 centimeters wide across the top and in this pot this year we've got two plants Last year I have four and that was way too many. They're extremely productive. So these two plants have covered mostly this side of the water tank. And on the other side, we have a symmetric one, another pot there with two more cucumelons. I think in future years, I might even reduce it to one plant because they are competing with each other, which is why they're looking quite hungry and cucumbers are hungry plants. And one plant with these nutrients is probably a better ratio. And you can see here, we've simply strung netting over our water tank, tied it around the back, and it's become the perfect growing trellis for our cucumelons. If you're growing them in a standard garden bed, I would recommend growing it vertically like this because it saves so much space. So find a trellis or some wire mesh and encourage your cucumelons to grow up it. If you let it sprawl in your garden bed, that's fine, but it's gonna waste a lot of space and take over the entire bed. And it also will be more susceptible to mildew and fung fungal diseases because it doesn't have as good airflow as this. And this also maximizes the light that hits the plant. You can see it's quite a vigorous grower. I mean, we've got two plants on each side and they're really, really taking over the water tank. And it's actually gone all around the side of our water tank too. There might even be ones around the back. We'll have to hunt around there. We're gonna have a look at the top. What's going on up there? Okay, I'm standing on a milk crate. Fortunately, our water tank's not that tall. But you can see the vine. It's gone all over the top as well. And there's fruit there. There's actually a lot of new flowers up here because this is the sunniest spot. And this is the advantage of growing vertically. We can catch a lot of the sun that we just simply don't have down here because it's so shaded out by the water tank and by the other garden structures like the shed, the tree, our neighbor's carport. So really this section gets no sun and it's amazing that the cucumelon can grow so well in shade but the ones up here are able to tap into a lot of sun bathing in that sunshine. This is where you're um, sun baking up here and it's really hot my face is getting burnt up here so this is really warm and this might be where we get our later flush of fruit because it's so sunny up here as the temperatures start to cool down here they're not going to be as productive Eek, just be careful i found a whole family of snails hiding behind the cucumelon leaf and behind the netting i'm going to just gently squish these babies I'm so sorry and put that into them off no glamorous way to do this that's so gross but us gardeners are used to really gross icky things and I'm gonna just gently wipe that onto the soil here with a weed that I just pulled out and that's also gonna be fertilizer for our cucumelons sorry baby snails Cucumelons produce male and female flowers, just like standard cucumbers. You can see here, this is a male flower, and the flowers are so teensy tiny. You can see this is a male, because it's just a little yellow flower without a baby cucumelon at the back. Let's compare this to a female cucumelon flower. You can see there, 
my gosh they're already tiny but the baby cucumber melons are so small that's the size of a grain of rice or a grain of barley it's a little baby fruit with a yellow flower on the end and I'm gonna be really gentle with that so I don't snap it off and there's another one just up here that's for me Eek. still got some snail gunk on my hand cucumber melons do need pollination and you need to encourage bees if you want heaps of cucumber melons like we have here you need to encourage bees to come and move the pollen from the male flower into the female flower because you're not going to do this by hand they're so tiny the normal cucumbers you might but not these you're going to rely on your insect pollinators in order to um, cross pollinate them cucumber melons are said to be perennial I personally have not experienced this. After many years of growing them, I have not successfully overwintered them once and I've never re-sprouted. So I've replanted from seed generally every spring. I have lifted them before and once you pull them out, it's quite surprising, but there's a huge tuber underneath there, a huge white tuber that can be quite long and knobbly. And you'd think that would overwinter because it kind of looks like a potato. But unfortunately I've not had any success so there were times where I left the plant in the soil like this and mulched really heavily over winter hoping that they would come back but come spring come summer nothing emerged so I had to plant and replace with new seed I've also lifted the tuber out before and stored it in a shed in a, a dry airy spot all the things I'm supposed to do and I planted that and it still didn't come back so give it a go but plant some backups because in my experience it's a bit hit or miss it's not as reliable in terms of reshooting as some of the the other perennials so for me it's not a true perennial but in warmer climates maybe it would be because um, we do get quite cold winters and maybe the tubers don't love that but potentially uh, wonderful climbing perennial a great addition to any food forest i highly recommend them and now we're going to do some taste tests i'm going to cut some open and do a taste test and let you know what i think of them okay in our makeshift outdoor kitchen i've got two cucumber melons here and i picked two different ones to show you how much the size can vary when they're picked bigger like this one they're going to be a bit more sour. So their name, Sour Mexican Gherkin, does tell you that they're slightly more sour than standard cucumbers, which makes them perfect for pickling. But when they're big like this, they're more sour than when they're picked smaller, where they're much milder. So you can see they can get you know, quite a big size difference. If you zoom right in and look at that, you might think without scale that I'm holding a watermelon. <laughs> Let's cut it open and see what it looks like inside. I'll do the bigger one first. So the skin is much firmer than standard cucumber. And I'll just ignore that red coloring. That's not actually meant to be there. I was just cutting another fruit before, our strawberry guava. And you can see inside, it's green and white. It's not a watermelon. It's not red. And it looks like a cucumber. You can see it's got a row of little seeds here which if you left it long enough they would form and harden and let's cut the smaller one again much firmer skin than standard cucumbers and that's more green because that's a younger more tender fruit and that's a bit more white because it's a bit older so let me do a taste test Okay, tasting the younger one first. Mm. Definitely a chewier skin. Inside it's quite soft and tastes just like a cucumber, but a teensy bit more sour. Now I'm gonna try one of these bigger ones. Mmm. That's crunchy and that is a lot more tart but in a really nice way it tastes kind of like lemon like you've added lemon 
to a cucumber which will be actually awesome for a salad because you just chuck these in and you wouldn't have to dress your salad anymore you'd have cucumber and lemony dressing all in one go and you heard that crunch when I bit into that they're really really crunchy and they've got great texture and that's so nice I actually really enjoy that sourness they would be amazing pickled and we're going to do some of that um, this season so I'll show you that process down the track we're going to pickle some but lots are also going to get gobbled up and they're perfect lunchbox size fruit there's no cutting required for lunch boxes and the smaller ones can just go straight onto the salad almost like a cherry tomato throw it straight on mm. of hard excuse me it's hard not to gobble them all straight off the vine and now I'm going to try one whole straight in mmm mmm that's so good skin definitely takes more chewing than sandy cucumber but flavor is amazing mm, that was really yum I hope that's increased your appetite for growing these delicious little cucumbers. They're so cute and easy to grow. I hope you found that interesting and enjoyable and you learned something from it. As always, if you enjoyed, please remember to like, subscribe to our channel and share with your friends as this helps us to grow and to keep featuring more unusual and interesting fruit and vegetables. Thank you for tuning in and until next time. Like a bird on a tree